Hello out there, all you PT on Icers. Uh, this is Morgan Denny coming to you live from Portland, Oregon. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the SI joint. So at one of the last courses that Justin and I taught, that age old question came up. When is it do you manipulate or mobilize an SI joint and when does it just need stability? The answer honestly is yes. <laughs> the SI joint, right, is this intriguing element in the human body. You know, it doesn't have a yes or no, an either or. It's definitely an and or maybe or both kind of a thing, right? I mean, the SI joint is included in both the spine. You know, it's considered like S1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 onto the tailbone. Um, but, you know, we also consider it part of the pelvis. So it's, it's kind of that magical spot, right? Where for better and for worse, ground reaction forces are coming up from the floor through our feet, up through our hips, you know, into the nominate, and it meets those gravitational forces that are coming down through our spines, and they kind of meet at the SI joint, which is wonderful. Um, but that also means that it's under a lot of forces all the time, and is a joint that not only needs to move, but really only needs to move a little bit, and not more, or else you've got some trouble. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about some considerations for the SI joint. Um, I don't really want to focus on identifying a true SI joint problem because most of you have likely seen quite a few um, and probably know Laslett's rule. Um, though if anyone out there would like to hear more on that, we can definitely do a future PT on ice on how to identify a true SI joint problem versus something else going on around and referring to similar areas. Anyhow, um, that said, there, like with the SI joint, there really are a lot of surrounding factors to think about. And while most of them are the same factors we consider elsewhere in the body, SI joint issues often seem to be kind of amplified compared to other spots and spaces. You know, for example, um, as with any case, we want to think about the irritability of these symptoms, right? Like with an SI joint dysfunction, particularly a severe one, most movements hurt, but really it's going to be focused on weight bearing movements like walking or stairs or jumping or leaping. You know, and finding out a history around how long this injury has been bothering a person or going on or off and on or significant in their lives is really key. You know, we know that inflammation in the knee inhibits the VMO, but why is it that we think differently about other joints, particularly the SI joint, right? If it's been an ongoing problem, you're likely going to see full lower extremity changes, like especially in the glutes category, right? And if the glutes aren't doing their job, especially during gait, you'll likely have a larger Trendelenburg during loading phase, and then you have increased shearing forces at the pelvis with that gravitational force coming down and the ground reaction forces coming up, and voila, right? It's like you've got one of the famous catch-22s or like the body's famous vicious cycles going on where you've got this chronic SI irritation and inflammation creating inhibition of the glutes, and then you've got the inhibition of the glutes creating further shearing forces on the SI joint, right? And this is why strengthening of the glutes is key in terms of decreasing the irritability and pain sensations in the SI joint dysfunction. Not just because it's that muscle that crosses the joint, but because it can actively reduce the forces that are stressing the SI joint out, right? And let's, let's be honest, who gives a shit if we strengthen the glutes if we don't train our patients to use them during that functional activity, right? So making sure we're activating the glutes at heel strike to foot flat phase, you know, to make sure during walking that we're gaining that glute med activ activation, you know, but remembering that if your patient does something faster, like running or changing motion or changing direction, <laughs> changing motion, you know, you've got to change that activity with speed. You know, never forget the speed stuff, guys, because if we don't get that trained in, we're kind of losing, losing a lot there. So similarly, we have to remember that with the SI joint, the bony structure is not actually the most central piece with muscles just on the outside, right? But that the pelvic floor musculature can play a role in SI joint dysfunction as well, right? Now, this does not by any means say that every SI joint patient through the door, you should refer to see a pelvic PT. But you've got to learn to ask some of the right questions, right? Like any incontinence, stress or otherwise, pain with sex, 
Does your pain increase cyclically? You know, any change in symptoms when you poop or pee? And yes, I totally use the words poop or pee in the clinic. You know, and these questions, you guys, these go for both your male and female patients who you believe have an SI joint issue going on. Because yes answers to some of these questions could indicate that internal muscle imbalance or weakness or hypotonicity or tendinopathy or something like that is really continuing this SI joint problem to get worse or go on even as you're doing some of the same ortho stuff, right? So remember you guys, the pelvic floor is interconnected with SI joint stuff. It's the same type of musculoskeletal dysfunction that we're used to, it's just in a slightly different area, right? So get to know and understand some of those questions so that if your external work isn't working, you get them to the appropriate practitioner. Now, one last piece to keep in mind is always, always, always checking above and below. I've seen so many patients who develop SI joint issues because they have a hip that's become tight and hypomobile, right? Like lo and behold, every time they try to do that classic knee to chest stretch, their symptoms increase, right? Understand that when your hip doesn't truly flex or extend, the SI joint will, will crank through that, whether it's posterior or anterior rotation, right? Because the hip isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Like that classic point of least resistance thing, you're going to get motion there. And that one piece that moves, that one piece is going to get chronically stretched, those ligaments having more force put through them than they should because something around them isn't moving, right? Same thing can happen with any movement that the hip does or slash doesn't do. You know, with ABD, ADD duction, you can have similar stuff happen where depending on what your patient is getting back to what that functional motion is, if they're a dancer or someone who needs lateral strides, like if that hip doesn't move in the way that it should, you can get a lot of those forces and torque that's going through the SI joint. You know, and then there's the question, of course, do I move it or do I stabilize it? And like I said earlier, yes, exactly. You know, there's no right or wrong answer to that. And unless you do the same thing over and over and nothing is changing, like that's the only wrong answer. But if your patient truly has an SI joint issue, I think there's a lot of benefit in manipulation or mobilization or muscle energy or whatever it is you do with that region that you're good at. You know, and that by no means means that you should not follow with exercise. You know, conversely, there are a lot of patients who do have really sloppy SI joints. And, you know, whether it's because of hypomobilities around inhibited muscle groups, but all that stuff over the years has allowed a lot of slack and stretch through those ligaments and through the SI. And those folks are gonna get flared up if you mobilize them a lot, you know? They need some good old standard exercises, maybe that classic Luco tape X across their SI joint, maybe some dry needling and a lot of encouragement. Additionally, they need a PT like you, hopefully, who can identify some pretty basic exercises that don't actually increase the shearing forces of the pelvis, but just work to get some blood flow in there, some stability, and teach them how to use that muscle group actively. So you guys, keep in mind that SI joints, SI joints, SI joint patients, patients with SI joint dysfunction can be really tough right? But I think as clinicians, if we can get creative and be good detectives, we can really, you know, put their pubic cube together, so to speak, and be really helpful to these patients. So in light of that function, the song of the day is by Daft Punk, or at least a remix by them, and it's the Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger. So I hope you guys out there all have great days, and we'll talk soon. Good luck with all those SI joints.